Welcome to the channel, guys. Welcome to the Griddle Guys. So we love our griddles, obviously. We created a YouTube channel to you know, share with the community. But I gotta say, there's a couple of pet peeves I have about some of the griddles. Not all of them, some of them, but I have yet to find a griddle that suits all three of these pet peeves, takes care of all three of them. So Camp Chef, thank you Camp Chef. Camp Chef was kind enough to send us this unit we have here. A uh, couple of these units. A couple of these units. On today's video, uh, I got my gloves on. What we're gonna do is crack this bad boy open, pull out the angle grinder, and we're gonna take care of the pet peeves I have. So stick around, should be interesting. So if you watch the channel, we know we typically do an ingredient rundown for our videos. Today's ingredient rundown, a little bit different. We have angle grinder, cutoff wheels, flap grinding wheels, welding shield, welding gloves. This is gonna be fun. It's a ting of beauty, Danny. Let's get this thing cracked open. So big shout out again to Camp Chef. Like I said, we uh, told them we were gonna be working on this project, our, uh, our friend over there, Ryan. And uh, he said, have at it. Not only did he send us one, he sent us two. And uh, that way we get to play around with it, see what it is. I'm gonna open this up, see how much work is needed as far as to assemble. We did mention to Ryan that we were gonna be taking an angle grinder to the griddle, and he was like, hey, have at it. So what do we got? Definitely get some nice packing. Well, let's see if we can get rid of some of this foam. Move that out. Oh! Well, we got the styrofoam out. That looks pretty... Uh, pretty assembled. Pretty assembled. Let's see how many parts there are. Are you kidding me? Look How at that. that fit in that. How do they fit that in that tiny box? <laughs> You don't have a skinnier screwdriver, do you, Jeff? Yeah. You gotta kind of pull it in a little bit. What's in the bottom? A little bit left in there, guys. A little more assemble required. Oh, this is getting <laughs> ridiculous how hard this is. I will say, this is one aspect of the Camp Chef that I love. The so, wait a second. Shelves. One, two, three pieces so far. Are we calling that done? <laughs> That's done. Wait, there's another box with the griddle. Oh, we have four pieces. And it comes with grill grates if you want to grill. Wow. Which I never plan to use because the inside is such nice stainless steel. Let's I don't keep want to it get, that way. I don't want to get it all dirty. <laughs> so here's the three things that I, my three pet peeves. And the first one is the grease catch system on pretty much every griddle hey, out there. Be before we go too far into that, can we just say, look at this beautiful man right here. Get out of here, would you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's been missing, missing from the shots being behind the camera. This is a little against this idea, but I can't wait to see how it comes out. It's a perfectly beautiful griddle. He's not a little against it, he's a lot against I'm it. A lot it, is, against it. it is a nice griddle. It's right. a beautiful griddle. So your pet peeves, Nate. First one is the grease catch system, right? So there's, there's basically three different designs out there. You have this front trough, catch system. You have the Blackstone rear grease catch system. So that goes under there. Yeah, so catches this is it. where it catches. So you have this little nipple here. Each of them, to me, have their own Same shortcomings, nipple. right? <laughs> so the, the front grease catch system leads to my second pet peeve, which is you get over spatter. So you'll have this trough, if it's not perfectly balanced, is gonna be full of a little bit of oil that's like 600 degrees. You get a tiny bit of food in there and it's like an explosion and you just get oil all over your deck, right? Spits everywhere. Spits everywhere. So Blackstone does have a, a they put a wall here when they swap to the rear grease catch system. My second pet peeve is the rear grease catch systems um, don't allow you to get the schmeg that's on your griddle into it. So they basically have a small slot right about here. The slot is narrower than your scraper and it's only, what would you guys say, a half inch tall? If you watch enough videos, you see a lot of food go through that. Good cooked food. <laughs> you really do. Just besides the point, too small to actually push <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you can't you push. To. So when you're cooking on the griddle, you know after you're done cooking and you scrape it, you've got all that black stuff, right? And there's like a, they bent into it. So they like broke into the actual flat surface. Yeah, there's a little bit of a depression. So to it try dips to down. Channel the oil. Right, so we've got the front gre the grease catch systems overall. Blue Rhino actually did a pretty good job. They cut a little notch, a little hole. My issue with them is the hole is too narrow. Right. Still too small. Right. Too, still too small. So we're gonna use this piece of steel Chris is leaning on. We're gonna build a front wall 
on this one. Jeff and I are gonna figure out how we do a better grease catch system that allows us to get all the grease in there, get all the water in there from cleaning, and most importantly for me is get all the schmeg in there. So that black stuff that you typically have to have a trash can, you know, right next to you, and you're scraping it off. What I wanna do is be able to take the scraper and just scrape it right into the grease catch. So, so more of a commercial setup. Well, yes, actually this is what gave me the idea, right? So when you're cooking on a commercial griddle, they typically have a four inch trough in the front and that four inch trough has a big old hole where you take everything that you clean off the griddle and it goes right down the hole and then you empty it at the end of the night. So you wanna make this big enough for your spatula or your cleaner to 100%, get right there, bang, 100%. shovel it off. Yep. Now I will say one thing that I wanna point out about the Camp Chef that's real nice, and I'm gonna to get to this in a second, but Camp Chef actually builds in levelers on the bottom of your cook surface, which is really, really cool. Right? right there, yeah. nice I shouldn't say levelers, they're unlevelers, right? So they allow you to pitch your griddle surface towards your grease catch. So they have the levelers on that side, and they got the floor levelers on the other side. So you really have that unlimited. Uh, yeah. Which are yeah. very easy to move yeah. in and out, even on the legs. Nice. Yeah. So now we got to figure out how we're going to build it because the another pet peeve is having to buy aluminum tins and order them online. These are your standard from the supermarket size. I can pretty much always get these. I can pick them up when I'm doing my grocery shopping. They're like uh, loaf pans. Yeah, a little mini loaf pan. Yeah. This is bigger than what comes with either the black stone or them. the Camp Chef. Yeah. So it should be able to catch the oil, catch the water from cleaning, and I should bottle. be able to scrape the schmeg into it. <laughs> this is going somewhere. Jeff's going to have to figure this out. I don't know if it's going to go here, here, I don't know. That's, that's part of what we're doing today. So that's it. You got the three. Let's get to work. The deal with pet peeve number one. Uh, Jeff is going to take this piece of steel and create a front wall, kind of like the Blackstone has. Um, they put a radius on this, which is really nice, uh, and it's right before the bend. So what I'm going to end up doing is taking some of the radius out, going straight down. And Do I show them on this side? Just overlapping that. Yeah. So I'm going to take some of this radius down, straight. And, you know, I'll show you. It's easier to see it than it is to try and describe it. But that way it's gonna bring this piece back, further back to the flat spot, so that way I have a spot to weld. We're gonna to have to grind off, unfortunately, some of this beautiful pre-seasoning. Yeah, the pre-seasoning on this is awesome, but we will have to grind it off to get a clean weld. Just a little bit, but. All right, so you wanna get started on that? Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's start. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is, uh, so I'm gonna use the edges, nice and simple. Just make a mark. I'm gonna go grind that. Safety first, of course. Dude, you cut on the wrong side of the line. I know. I know. <laughs> See, that's the great thing about metal. You can just weld it. Make it however you want. Warm, that's good, that's good. So now I'm just gonna cut that down a little bit. The radius? Radius. Take it off just a little bit. You gonna mark that or? No, I'm just gonna kind of freehand it. All right, let me grab safety glasses because something hit me in the uh, head while you were cutting. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this uh, little square edge on this. Looks good. And then we'll end up doing the uh, other side now. Go from there. So we just straighten those out, and this is the reason why. So now we got a nice flat surface to go to. Now you can fill that up with weld and everything, you know, none of this is structural, so it doesn't really matter, but this just gives us a nicer surface to weld to and it keeps it nice and straight. And it gets it on the, on the flat, on the on flat, on the griddles. Yeah, because this starts to radius down the bend. So the next step, we got to clean all the pre-seasoning off of this so that we can get a, a clean weld. Good weld. We gotta do that with a flap wheel? Uh, yeah, flap wheel, yep. All right. All right, so while just working on grinding down the, grinding off the pre-season finish. So I was initially I thinking think so. grease catch like back here. So you have the unlevelers on this side. So I was thinking of putting the tray here and using some steel rod to sort of hold it in place. Um, but then Jeff brought up a good point. Jeff said uh, 
the you get the the hard top. The hard top actually hangs off the back while you're cooking. And so if we put this, kind of keeps the heat off the house too, which is a nice there. feature. So if yeah. you put this back there, you can't use the hard top. So we came up with the next idea. Again, engineer on the spot, right? Next idea idea is we're gonna cut out the shape of the grease trap, and we're gonna countersink the grease trap into the side shelf here. Hopefully smaller than the grease trap. Hopefully smaller than the grease trap. So we're gonna go something like this. I don't wanna go all the way back to the corner because you have hinges and stuff here. Yeah, we'll get as close So as we'll we be can. in a little bit. I also probably wanna leave some of the, Actually, the bend here for structural integrity. I would go to right here. That'll be our cut line because you already have the cut line there, so less cutting. So we'll just use this as our cut line. All right, yeah. You know, the, the preparations. Corner. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then we're gonna build a little ramp off of this to go in here. You know what else I wanna do? I wanna do, um, I maybe wanna use some of that steel rod to create like a drip edge. Oh, yeah. So that you don't get grease run back. Yeah. You Good know? Call. Good call. Some of this stuff is easy to just show you. You know, we wanna kinda give you an idea of what we're thinking too along the way and the thought Yeah, the process. next hour and a half is gonna be just grinding and welding and working. Yeah. That is, that makes me sad. That was fast. Look how fast that came that off. That makes That's me nice. really sad taking that off because that is some nice stuff. That looks good, Jeff. And that's it. You know, like my grandmother used to say to me, every time I did something wrong, it's just not right. It's just <laughs> not right. I am totally against this. Look what they're doing to this beautiful grill we just had. You're going to be happy when it's done, Christopher. We'll see. You're, I don't know. TBD. You're gonna to, you're gonna... You know, I know it's loud in here, but I just want to say, Chris always gives me a hard time for sitting down when we're working. I don't know. What do you think, Chris? Think you, you, look are, you look awfully comfy. You guys are crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. I think you guys did the wrong cooking show. <laughs> yeah, Jeff's got this all cleaned up. Got all the schmeg off of it. That's going there. While he works on getting this tacked in, I, I, one of the things that I don't like about the two-handed scraper is there's no hook on it. So what I want to do is I'm going to, I got some, some round rod over there. I'm going to make a, a sort of a hook. Actually, I'm going to use this whole trough for hooks. But I want this to hang, I don't know, something like this. Yeah. So I'll work on that while uh, while you work on this. Okay, Jeff? Nice. All right. These guys are working like dogs. Well, Jeff is anyway. It's hot. Jeff's it's working like a dog. It's actually not hot. It's just muggy. I hate to say it, but I've never seen these two guys this excited for a video. I think they're in their element right now versus cooking. This is the hook steel. <laughs> this is the hook steel. All right. So I'm estimating about 13 inches for a hook to get that two-handed scraper to hang where I want. I don't feel like going through the effort of changing Jeff's flap wheel to a cutting wheel, so we'll go old school. I'm against it, just for the record. All right, so I haven't welded in a couple years, so this is gonna be interesting. It's kind of like, you know, riding a bike. <laughs> we'll see. Nate's, Time will tell. Nate's trying to stab me. Yeah, so I'm just gonna tack the ends. I got these little uh, squares here just to keep it straight up and down. Good luck. Sounds good. So I'm just going to tack this and hold it in a couple different places before I start running the bead. Just because the heat will make it warp. And I think I'm going to run a bead on the back and see if uh, I get some practice in that way. All right, so we got that stitched and uh, we'll let it cool off a little bit and I'll start running my bead. Yeah, I definitely could use some practice. Any welders out there? Cut Don't look too close. Cut me some slack. I also look bad, Jeff. Those are clean enough. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got the first bend in my hook. Just put a mark for my second bend. Fortunately, this stuff's pretty thin. I can just bend it by hand. Let me do that. <laughs> look at that concentration. Glad you find yourself so amusing. So I basically need a 90 degree bend on this or close to it, but I can't get it far enough down on the vise. So I think if I wrap it around this, it should be pretty close. I gotta make a 90 on my mark, but I can't get it down. If I go this way, it's gonna wrap around the vise. Okay. So I gotta use a spacer. Okay. So I'm using your socket. Nice. So say goodbye to the socket. Yeah, good call. <laughs> and for anybody that's under uh, 260 pounds, uh, hammer works well too. Yeah, don't try this at home. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see how that looks. Nice bend. That looks good. Yeah, we'll see. Candy cane. My Ben that the boys are giving me a hard time over. How perfect is that? Nice. 
Spot on. Nice. Now I just gotta get the hook in it. Let me grab the, uh, I think I'm gonna do a 90 on this hook so that we can go, you know what, Jeff, you're right. I should've made it longer. So we can have it hanging this way. I don't want it hanging this way because it's gonna yeah. bang into the yeah. leg. So we'll go here. So where's that Sharpie? I'll bend it first and then I'll twist it. You know, call me crazy, but why couldn't you just put a hook right here and then? <laughs> I could, you can do that. Actually, there's a hole there already. Yeah. The same thing. Maybe I'll use that one. Hey, Chris did something good today. Yeah. Chris wants to show you guys how bad this griddle looks right now, but Jeff's doing. That's actually. This beautiful griddle that we used to have not more than an hour ago is now ruined. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, I'll bend it first and then I'll twist it. How's that? Okay. Measure measure once, cut twice, that's my theory. No, 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 no. Check twice, bend once. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get that backwards? Am I okay to uh, yeah. weld? Yeah, go right ahead. Get All right, so. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's not, not good. <laughs> Protection. So I don't know, do I want to go this way? That's the beauty of it. Well, I, this, I don't want this banging against this and marking it up. So all I got to do is just leave an inch and bend that up. Yeah. What happened to the plan? We had a plan. Well, we can do it here too, but I kind of like Chris's plan better. Well, why'd you reverse it? Or did you bend that the wrong way and you don't want to do it again? No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He made a mistake, didn't he? No, I'm gonna clamp this and twi I can twist this whichever way I want. Okay, I think I like the other one. What do you think? I think I like this whole, I like this better over here. Yeah. You know, that way there, if there's anything dripping, it'll keep it off the leg. Yeah, right onto the deck, perfect. And, and hit the grill mat that we never buy. <laughs> Perfect. So, All right, we're going to get back to it. All right, so as you saw, the hook is done. I just got to clean it up so I can get some uh, some paint on it. All right, got the hook cleaned up. Let's coat the paint. It's like a genuine hook. Factory. There it is. Well, what do you think, fire guy? It's good enough. <laughs> I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. Everybody watch your eyes. Just kind of solder it right there. That'll season up nicely. It's not perfect, but it is good. All right, so guys, we're the, uh, trying to figure out the best way of doing this. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how to get this as exact as we can. Jeff came up with a good idea. We want to keep the lip hanging on the shelf. So we're going to cut the lip off, which should give us a template to use to mark out where on the shelf we're going to sink this in. So you figure, yeah, it'll almost be right to the edge. This is going to have a little shelf going into it. I mean, we just have to make sure that we'll be able to pull it out. Is that oh, right? no, yeah, should work. If you look at the side, yeah. see the taper on the bottom? Yeah. It's going to fit right in there. Yeah, so as long as we can pull it out. We're going to squish it a little bit, but it should get right in there. They're coming out, no problem. Well, you can always push it up from the I bottom. I don't know, Chris, why don't you tell us how your coming out was? <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, I think we have a winner. All right, so Jeff did a fabulous job on the front edge. Nice and sturdy, looks good. We're gonna have to obviously season this steel. But the next step is we got the knockout made for the grease trap that has metal fragments in it. So that's gonna sit there and what I really, really want for our pet peeves two and three, right? Back up, back up. I just wanna be able to hear you. Is I wanna be able to take this and I wanna be able to wipe the schmeg off and have it land in the grease trap. So this has to be wider than this. We're gonna cut probably a half inch on either side, cut this wall out, weld a little ramp on down here so that it extends not fully into the middle of this, but I'm thinking, I think we said what, two inches, Jeff? Inch and a half. Whatever it is. No, Chris is right, inch and a half. We just have to make sure that you can pull this up. Right, what we don't wanna do is infringe on being able to lift that up. Right. All right, so Nate kinda gave us a mark to go by. We made it a little bit wider than that, right there and right there. So I'm just gonna plunge down into this. It's a, it's a guesstimate cut, guesstimate cut. Roughly, Nate, you're, you're right in the... All right, guys, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tack on this little piece of rod I just cut. This is gonna be the underside of the shelf that drips into the drip tray. And the reason for that is to stop grease run back as we've all dealt with at one time or another. So the grease should hit this rod and drip into here. And should. As soon as Jeff finds his welding gloves, he's should. gonna do that. Should be in the keyword. So now we get that tacked on. Just to give you an idea of what Nate was thinking. Yeah, that's Definitely what I was thinking. Definitely did not want to go further back than that. That's about as short as we can make it. I think it's perfect. So 
we put the edge on, the drip edge, that way the uh, oil will go where the oil is supposed to go. I got these handy dandy magnets just to hold this flush to the griddle top. Just gonna throw some beads in this, put a couple tacks in. We're gonna flip the whole griddle over and we're gonna weld this from the back side too. I'm just kind of spreading it out so that way it doesn't warp or get super hot. So what we learned, and maybe this is why all of the grease traps are not great on the griddles, is with this setup coming straight off, you do have a lot of rollback. And what's happening, you can see the shelf is a little wet here. We tested it with some water. The oil rollback is not landing where we want it to land. So we're gonna extend this shelf. That's what Jeff's working on now. We're gonna extend it out a little bit. I don't know how much, Jeff, half inch? Yeah, about a half inch. Half Quarter inch. inch yeah. We're gonna pitch that down. We're, we're keeping our drip bar. Take the oil drip. 13, all part of custom stuff. For those of you who didn't know I'm here, I'm leaving. <laughs> I had enough. Chris will not be here for the rest of the video. He has to go. He has something else to do on Saturday. All right, so this is like modification <laughs> seven, maybe. Uh, we just put one wall on. We're going to get the other wall on. We're going to widen out the shelf, and I think that should do it. All right, so here's where we're at. And this is probably what you guys at Blackstone and Camp Chef and Blue Rhino have run into. The issue we have is when the grease trap is under the grease catch, in order for you to pull it out, it hits. So we widened the opening so that you can slide it back and then lift it straight up, okay? Now, what that means is we don't have much structural integrity holding the bottom of the grease catch. And I don't want to put a lot of faith in just these little flanges. So we just fabricated a little bracket. This is gonna go right under here, right in the middle. We're gonna tack weld that in, and that should uh, that should be it, I think, right, Jeff? I think so. All right, so that's the next step. Might have to happen tomorrow, because yeah, uh, we've run tomorrow. late in the day. <laughs> so we'll be back. Listen, the piece we just cut, throw it like that, drill a hole right there. That'll be our little swing door. All right, we're back, day two, second day of the build. Day 14. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff apparently had an epiphany overnight. He built this really cool sliding door to support the back edge of the grease catch. We soaked everything down a couple of times, cleaned everything up. We got all the slag off of it. We got the, the steel dust. Now it's time to season the areas where we stripped off the seasoning to get clean welds. We're gonna cheat too. Yeah, we're gonna cheat. So, so, so I'm gonna drop some oil on this. So a lot of heat doesn't really get to this edge and to the side, so this is a way of kind of... We're gonna use the torches to get it to a temp faster. Yeah. So bear with us, this gets a little noisy. I rounded all those edges over too. There we go, all right. So we got the, uh, a good base on the front edge and the back edge. Um, we didn't want to go too thick and we're not too worried about it because that'll just get better with time. Uh, but we just also wanted to coat it so that way it doesn't rust. Next, we're going to do the uh, custom grease ramp trap 6000 and we own that. Um, what, what, what kind of oil are we using here? Uh, this is like a canola. And careful, doing what Nate's doing right now because... So I like to put it on and then pull some of it off. The only thing worse than a steam burn from water is a, it's a hot burn. oil burn. <laughs> it's a steam burn from hot oil. All right, guys, we're finally done with the build piece of this. We got the grease ramp 6000. We got the front lip. We got the grease catch built into the shelf. I am happy. Of course, you got to test it with bacon, right? You got to start with bacon. We did have this thing screaming hot while we're trying to season it. So, so the, right now, we got the two middle burners off. The bacon is going to fuse to the <laughs> two outside burners on. Once we get a big puddle of fat going, a big puddle of grease going, we're gonna bring the camera in up tight so you guys can see the grease ramp 1000 in action. Um, if you're still with us, it'd be great if you hit the subscribe button. That'd be awesome. Appreciate it. All right, here's a test. Grease trap 6000. We already got some drippage going. It's going in the right spot. But I got a big old puddle of bacon grease. Sorry for the noise. We're gonna push all that there, see if we get no grease rollbacks, and it lands in the right spot. 
Ooh. And notice he's not pulling 700 degree bacon grease back towards him. I like it. I like it. I'm happy. <laughs> nice. I can fit the whole scraper. I love it. So are we starting to call this a success, sir? It's getting there. We got to test the Schmeg. So I got burgers for that. All right, guys, the Schmeg test like we talked about. So just to make this a really good test, we actually poured teriyaki sauce directly on the griddle. That looks horrible. Which is what you see here. And this, let me do this. I was, that, I was against this for the record. That is the stuff that is tough to deal with because getting that into the regular grease trap or the Blackstone grease trap, it's tough. It basically bonds to your scraper. Uh, a lot of us, I know what we do, right? We take this and we, we find like a, a different trash can or something like that to stick it in. So this is the big reason why I wanted this. I can pull all this here and I can just run it right off and in. And what's stuck on here Jeff, you have no idea how happy you've made me. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we can call this done. Done! Guys, like, subscribe. If you made it this far, we really appreciate it. And let us know what you think about yeah. these uh, updates. Hit the comments. Let us know what you think is wrong, what you think is right. I can tell you, I'm taking this home and I am ecstatic. We got so. a couple of more things we're gonna do to it too. So, but we this do? is, yeah, well, I'm on mine. <laughs> okay. We'll save that for mine though. All right, next video. Cheers, guys. Cheers, see ya. All right, pound of bacon, two burgers, teriyaki sauce, four buns with mayonnaise, not butter. We just cleaned up, got all the water into the grease catch system, the grease catch 6000. And I just want to point out a couple of things. Over spatter, there's virtually none on the garage floor. The handles, there is a tiny bit of over spatter. I mean, very, very minimal. You know, if you look at the face of the camp chef, you don't have grease running down. Ooh, that's warm. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's gonna be the next thing that we, we look at. So now we're gonna test Jeff's uh, sliding door. This griddle is on, so uh, everything here is hot. So we're gonna pull this out, and this was another thing that is kind of a pain in the ass, right? Or some, excuse me, pain in the butt. Another thing is, you know, you cook on your griddle, your grease trap gets close to full, right? And you look at it and you're like, oh, do I gotta empty it? It's piping hot. So we got low, off, low, off. And I mean, this is really warm, but check this out. This aluminum, barely warm, just fit it by, take that and I can empty it. Rinse it out even if I want. Bring it back, drop it back in after it's been emptied, slide it forward, pull our door back, pop it right under there so it supports it. Nice job, Jeff. Nice job.